Good morning. You want to do a trail run with me? Good Sunday morning here. It's sunny out, crisp. Oh, what a perfect day. Oh my gosh. What a perfect day. Uh, here is a lovely opening. Uh, all right. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then the eleventh halfway. And that's what I do. That's how you do that hardcore push-up routine. Literally the last rep is a half rep and then you hold it. It is amazing, amazing. The gains you will get in your endurance and also in your aesthetics will blow your mind. Now let's see where this one goes. It's got all these like little intersections and detours. Ah, oh, I did not expect this. More push-ups. All right, so when I get too tired, like I'm already breathing heavy after 22 push-ups, the, that last rep gets, uh, kind of gets your arms quivering and your chest quivering and it's magnificent. Uh, before I go back into the woods again, let me show you a health secret that I discovered two years ago during the Wooga Booga that has kept me healthy, and that is this right here. That is an eastern pine. You make tea out of it. Here it is right here, the long needles. You make tea out of this, and I, I did a video on that. It's beautiful. It tastes like pine, just like what you would think but it has a lot of vitamin C and minerals in it. And for me, it helped me stay healthy during the Wooga Booga days. And, uh, and, I, and I'm jab free, so that's cool. Pure blood here. Always open to meeting a jab free woman. Why not? Why not come out and say it? Why are people afraid to say that they're open to marriage or open to meeting a spouse. I don't know why. In certain spheres, it's not a cool thing to do. I don't give a rat's ass about that. I'm a grown man. I know what the hell's going on with my life. And I make decisions differently now than I did decades ago. And I will never fall into the same trap. It's not a trap, but you know what I'm saying. Never make the same mistakes again. All right, so here's the deal. I walk through open areas. I jog through the wooded areas. The leaves here are just out of this world. Wow. My foraging book, I got to look these up. These berries. You see them? I have no idea what they are. Maybe you can help me out if you know what they are. There's a lot of these here. So 
I like to view, see, I like to view field and forest uh, as a pharmacy and food store. There's a million things here that people bypass, you know, and don't realize their food. Now I'm smelling something other than just the cut grass. There's something sweet in the air. I don't know what it is. Some of these, some of these trees stay green all year round. And I don't know what they are. All right, here we go. Here's a wooded area. See, I'm not in a hurry. This is not a race. It's faster than a jog, but I'm not quite running. My knees are bent a little bit. I want to keep a good solid footing. As an older guy, it's important. Uh, footing is important. And how you place your feet and what you place your feet on is important because your vision can play tricks on you when you're changing textures and terrain. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The 11th is going to be with the knees on the ground. I haven't done push-ups in, well, actually since last weekend. But not bad for an old guy, right? I'm looking at the area right now where I slipped. Remember last winter, I did a video here and on camera, you caught me like go down. Ah. And landed on my bottom versus on a knee or my tailbone. So doing squats and such and leg curls has kind of given me a little extra padding in the glute area. And it just felt like falling on a on a pillow, <laughs> so to speak. I think this is like that area right here. Yeah. It's a little bit low and it does tend to gather water right here. This fence is down. That's a deer fence, but, and I see green peppers. That's green peppers right there. That's a shame that that fence is down. All right, what's over here? I see a path in the woods, let's do it. Watch the footing. Watch the footing. You know, it's a shame they got to put a sign that says no dumping. How weird is that? Which only means that people have dumped crap here. That's lame. Oh, I hate that. No dumping. Oh, I thought that sign said no trespassing. Believe it or not, what, two, two and a half years ago, this park was closed because of Wooga Booga. You couldn't park there. The cops would ticket your car if you came here during Wooga Booga because this is a county property owned by the county, owned and maintained by the, by the county. You couldn't fucking go outside in a fucking public park. Never forget that shit, folks. Never forget that shit. And remember that shit next time you go voting. Next time it's election day, 
Remember, they wouldn't let you fucking go outside. George, you sound angry. You're fucking right. You're fucking right. It's called taking away a person's freedom outside. Outside. Everybody I know who rolled up their sleeve has gotten sick two, three, four, five times. I didn't roll up my sleeve. Drank pine needle tea. Took my vitamins. Tiny bit of ivermectin every day. What happened to me? Nothing. Nothing, bitches. Nothing. I certainly hope that the Lord will take me and be there for me as the Archangel escorts me to the presence of Christ. That's how I look at it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Did you ever pray that prayer? What is this? It came off of that tree right there. Let's, it's got a very distinct smell. Let's break it open with, with a foot and see what's in it. That's one half of it. Ah, walnuts, right? Walnuts. And as I look on the ground, man, they're everywhere. How interesting, how interesting. I'm gonna take one of these ones that isn't smashed and bring it home. It's kind of like the way you look for a wife. You find one that isn't smashed. I'm just joking. <laughs> Little weirdo manosphere joke there, right? All right. Yeah, that smell is wild. Very distinct. Oh, and it discolored my fingers. All right, so where's this gonna go? All right, let's take a look. Shall I go this way or this way? Always take the road less traveled. Always take the scenic route through the woods. Oh, this is the one that goes uh, over a little creek. And this is where you can get really, really get yourself into trouble here because it gets slippery. Uh, Nothing like a babbling brook. What the heck is that? I see a piece of lumber there. What is that? Let's go take a look. That wasn't there before. And it looks like new lumber. What the heck? This is new lumber. Look at this. It still has the tags on it. These are what? Like four by sixes. Interesting. I smell foul play. Interesting. Okay. Oh, more berries. You foraging people. I am a more serious, newer forager. So these are smaller and bluer than the ones that I showed you before. And this is important. Whenever you're going through the woods and you see moss, you have to touch it. That's your rule right there. You have to touch the moss and see how soft and beautiful and wonderful nature can be. All right, so let's cross over here. Watch the footing. All right. Continue. Oh, this is the area that also gets flooded and becomes an ice skating rink in the wintertime. And the mud muck goes up past your boots that's how low you sink in this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Uh, all right. Now, if I didn't get on my knees, 
I would have struggled with that. So is it better to do them on your knees and to be able to do them or to do two or three and have crappy form and not do the full reps? I'd rather just use my knees. The beard got trimmed yesterday. My beard was two inches longer and one to two inches wider. And I like a more, I like a more uh, narrow look. This is a good look. I like it. Uh, so we have uh, milkweed here. You know the milkweed, right? Wonderful. We have all kinds of wonderful tall, wild grasses here. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You guys like, are you guys a fan of ornamental grasses? These are natural, but that became a thing like in the past couple decades, about 20, 30 years ago, ornamental grasses. Again, since I started foraging, I uh, saw that every field, doesn't matter what it is, every single field and forest has food that can be consumed by humans. Every single field. Here we go, look at this. Yellow berries. If I had my book with me, I would be able to identify these. And then, of course, right next to them, the dark blue ones. Nice. Once you start spotting foods, that's a thing. Once you start, now look at this. Check this out. Some bright red berries. Once you start spotting food in the woods and in fields and in and around streams, you can't unsee it. Like some people just see grass and brush and trees. And if you, you are well versed in foraging, you see food. So people moaning and groaning about food shortages. If my grocery store ever closed, I already know. I already know I could come here and find roots, berries, leaves, medicinals. All natural, obviously. I like the woods because it's there's no pesticides and herbicides leaching into this crap here. What is this little path here? Oh, I know where it is. It's leading me to Okay, so this is the there's a butterfly garden in the middle of this farm park and we're gonna w walk around to it. This used to be a farm that produced all kinds of stuff and then so typical of uh, so typical of many farms where the children or grandchildren don't want a life of farming and after Ma and Pa pass away or Grandma and Grandpa pass away it becomes a housing complex of some type. It gets developed all right, so here we have a, this is the uh, butterfly garden right here. And in the summertime, this is beautiful. Now I see a tree with berries. This time, red berries. All right, so this is nice. These pavers here with a butterfly inlay. That's cool. Let me ask you this question right now. How many, how many people have you seen me pass here? This is Sunday. The county spent millions and millions of dollars creating this park. And today, I saw three cars in the parking lot. And that's the most I've ever seen here in this park, ever. I never see people here. Oh, here's someone coming. All right, so here we go. There's uh, stages of the adult butterfly. Yeah. 
So that's what's going on. But it's real nice. They have it paved and it's a path for people who might be uh, handicapped or possibly, uh, you know, have trouble walking. So it's paved in that way. That's pretty cool. Here's that hollowed out tree. Look at that all the way through. <sighs> they turned a uh, stable into, I guess, an area where you can just take a little break. Bird seed, oh, look at that. Bird seed donations, not a trash can. That corn in those fields, I don't know if it's for human consumption. I would imagine if it was, it would have been harvested by now. I'm guessing that it's cow corn for the farm across the street where they have the hormone and antibiotic free beef, pork, chickens and such. Uh, last time I checked, last time I checked, last year the beef there was $18.99 a pound. $18.99. And that's what you pay for non-corporate farmed beef where they graze out in fields they're not pumped with hormones and antibiotics and they get butchered and harvested in a humane way rather than crowding them all in these little stalls yeah, so that's cow corn right there. This is the spot where I fell on my ass. Remember last winter? Right here? Right here. There was about... I, I did a video last winter on my walk, run kind of thing through this farm. And this was the area where I went right... Boom! Boom! Right in my butt. And remember, there was a woman walking a dog. And I, you know, I'm friendly to all people and animals. And I said hello to the lady, and I said hello to the dog. I'm like, hi there, buddy. How are you? And he went, wah, 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 wah. Like, I'm like, oops. So he's protecting his owner. Again, houses with their backyards backing up to this park. How, how perfect. Seriously. It's like a yard you don't have to take care of that someone else takes care of. It's magnificent. Boy, I feel good. In loving memory of Philomena Ionelli Flote from the Ionelli family. She cared so deeply, loved so unselfishly, and gave so generously. That's cool. You live decades on this earth and then you get a park bench in your name from your loved ones. My grandfather, who I loved dearly, interesting story. So he died in maybe 86, 87, 88, somewhere in there, I don't know. And I had a dream about him 10 years later. Because I really, I don't know why, I took his death pretty, pretty hard. It was just hard. And uh, 10 years later, he was in a dream. The, the, gram the grandpa that I knew, healthy, just really talking, loving. He was in a dream and it was like a long dream. And we did, we were doing stuff. We were talking and walking and in his garage and all that. And after that dream, and it was very pleasurable. It was a very pleasurable dream. After that, I never had him in a dream ever again. And, all right, you want to hear the mystic, Bruno? I think, I think, could be wrong, and I sometimes am, I think it was my grandfather telling me everything was okay. Because he died of can prostate cancer and really suffered at the end. And I really think it was him just saying I'm all right. 
and I never worried about him. And I, I went from just pure grief thinking about him to pleasure when I think about him. I now have good memories and good feelings, but every thought about my grandfather just made me sad for the first 10 years after he died. Even just the thought of him made me sad. How weird is that? But it never happened again, ever, ever, ever happened again. So, was it the Lord? I don't know. I do know that I never grieved again and that my mourning was turned into joy Actually, now it's making me sad just thinking about it. Almost, I'm almost like choking up talking about him, thinking about that. Actually, not about, so much about him, but just thinking about how that happened. Kind of getting a little choky on you here. And then always... We finish our lap around this little wetland, marshy area filled with cattails. You know what I see when I see cattails? I see food. You know why? Because the cattail roots are edible. You heard me say this last year. If you pull up a cattail, and they do break off at the surface, so you gotta be real careful when you pull them or it'll break. If you pull the cattail root up a consistent, slow, steady pressure, a long white root that looks like a, a carrot that's got a couple little bends in it, wash it off, and when you taste it, it tastes like a minty, listen to this, a minty carrot. A cattail root tastes like a minty carrot. We are back. Oh, that was nice. That felt good. How perfect. How perfect. Now off to the farm to get some honey, which I am sure is expensive. Last time I bought honey here, it literally tripled in price but I would still rather have this raw honey and pasteurized stuff. The local honey is just wonderful for a number of things. And I'm gonna get some garlic as well. 